Okay, so let's start the presentation. So what is ROS? Basically, it is not an operating system. And we can say that it is the software environment for robotics development. So uh, basically, this is the definition I've got from the website of ROS itself. Uh, it defines the ROS as it is the set of software libraries and tools that will help you build robot applications. So while developing this ROS, there was a gap between the hardware engineers and software engineers. So ROS was developed uh, for bridging that gap from drivers to state of art uh, algorithms and with powerful developer tools, ROS uh, has what you need to for your robotics project and it's all open source. Uh, so that is the great, uh, that is one of the great feature of ROS. So I'd like to move to the history uh, because uh, we, uh, I, I wanted to share a little bit of history about this software. So this is uh, mainly initiated, this project was mainly initiated by uh, Eric Borzer and Kinan Virobek. They were the PhD student at Stanford and they were working at uh, the robotics laboratory in Stanford. And uh, they, I again wanted to say that they found the gap, there was gap between the, uh, the hardware, uh, hardware engineers and software engineers. So uh, there was missing, the, the bridge was missing between those uh, two fields. Uh, so they developed uh, small packets of uh, toolkits that will help to connect uh, those two things. Later on, a company called uh, Willow Garage, Willow Garage, uh, Willow Garage uh, cooperated with these two people and they, they first, they published this ROS to the source force and again later on later on the documentation was released and other website was released and other universities began to accepting this software in their research and development and research and development mainly the different universities like uh, different universities like MIT, UC Berkeley, uh, Georgia Tech now use this ROS for developing robotics. Later on, Open Source Robotics Foundation was formed which maintained the ROS and new version of ROS is released every year. Uh, so uh, now I'd like to move on to the question that uh, most of us will ask why should we choose ROS? So there are many different things that are really complicated in our environment for a robot to understand. We being a human being can understand those things easily, but robots need, need to tra train those things. So the environmental parameters around us are difficult for robots to understand. Uh, so ROS provides uh, that simulation materials and other toolkits for robots to understand those things easily and also there is the software base needed to develop robotics and also different the communication between different things need to be maintained in robotics so uh, that is provided by ROS and again it is open source platform and developed by community and it has grown very fast throughout the years and uh, the this ROS project now also provides industrial level support for the development of robots. Uh, so I wanted to uh, show you a little bit about this WeBots. WeBots is a robot simulator which has integrated uh, the ROS programming interface and uh, I didn't want actually ROS is uh, a big big field so I wanted to explore uh, about this WeBot uh, uh, now. So, what is WeBot? Uh, WeBot is a 3D modeling uh, software where we can also simulate the robot and test in different environment as we like. So, this software was developed by Cyber Robotics in 1998 and which is now freely available and is open source. So, this program helps us to uh, develop the pro, uh, program and 
also help us to make APIs to communicate between different different platforms. Also, user can uh, simulate and and record the simulation for different environment as they like. So Webot has this large collection of uh, models that we we use to make the uh, robot that we are designing in real life as well. Uh, so basically, uh, we first start to make a model with the help of uh, the modifiable models present in the Webots. And there are also sensors and actuators uh, and other different stuffs that we use in real life. Uh, so they can be uh, they can be simulated according to our need and uh, this thing uses uh, open dynamics engine this engine help us to deal with all the physics stuffs uh, that we need so yeah so we don't need to worry about that in webots uh, and it is already maintained accordingly so webots are there are various languages supported in webots uh, like c c++ python java and also uh, there, uh, there can be communication between the languages with the help of apis so why do we need webot why do we need to use this software at the uh, at the beginning so you know the materials that we use to make a robot are expensive so for testing them if uh, if something fails in while making the robot it will cost or cost cost or cost a lot so we do first simulation in computer and then we start to make a robot in real so with the help of simulation it is very easy to set up and it is less expensive for us and also the model the model will take only a few time to make so Again, the cost is greatly reduced with the help of simulation software like the, like the WeBoard. So we can explore more without thinking about the cost at the end of the project. So we can explore what a robot can do and we can give extreme environment, extreme environment in case of the WeBoard. Uh, so also the runtime is faster in WeBoard. So we can we can all we can simulate all the necessary necessary parameter and test all the all the things so we get very much less error at uh, at the end while we make our robot okay so we would uh, i wanted to talk about the interface of we uh, so there are few things here so first thing is called the world and i have also kept the interface here if you can see so the world is uh, this the field you can see in the picture that is called the world and the other side side interfaces is called the controller and the way the sorry the world is the place where you design all the all the model of your all the model of your robot as well as you design the model of your environment you design the model of the environment in which you have to test the robot so uh, you can keep various things there uh, and i i already said that there are built in object in this webots so you can just uh, pick uh, pick them and place them in the world and and the controller is the part where you where you uh, define all the parameters of the robots and the model and how the model will function and uh, how how you are gonna program the robot so in in the interface on the left side we define all the physics stuffs and uh, the nodes nodes are basically uh, the every new component added to it and we define physical parameters in this in this left side of this interface like uh, the color weight length height uh, etc and uh, uh, also the connections like joints i mean uh, the if we if we use the wheel and the joint will be the connection should be defined 
and the connection will be defined here and this side uh, the sorry the right side is the place for uh, programming uh, the robot model and basically c or c++ is used because uh, its runtime is faster but also the python and java are also used and various other language are also used okay so so let me explain you the workflow basic workflow of the weboard project so let us say we we make a weboard project we sorry so let us say we plan to make a robot so first before making a robot we first need to plan what our robot will gonna do and what our what the environment will be where the robot will be working so after defining all the environmental parameters of the working workplace of the robot we make a model of the robot first and uh, they are for making model so there are again there are uh, things called uh, the nodes i didn't want to go deep into it right now so nodes are basically every point that you add in your model like you can add a node of uh, a motor and you can join a wheel in it for moving so that kind of stuff are there and so also in uh, while making a model we need to connect every part so that it work properly uh, so it is kind of like uh, physically connecting things but uh, here we connect it uh, we connect it virtually i like that uh, so after making model we actually we also make the model of environment first we make the model of the robot and second we make the model of the environment that we need so we might need a terrain or kind of like uh, if we are making automatic uh, car a self driving car so we might need a road uh, so like that stuff uh, so we have to make that all ourselves uh, also weboot has one advantage uh, that is it has various projects that has already been made the model and program has already been made and we can just just load all the um, sorry we can just load the project and look at it and also we can edit it as it is all open source after making the model so we have to write programs so for writing programs uh, i personally prefer c and c++ and other other languages are also there but i have not used it so there are libraries uh, uh, that we have to include in the header file uh, and that is that library is is pre that library comes with weboot itself and that is kind of a default library of weboot and uh, there are everything defined inside that uh, library by weboot it, itself so um, in that library we can just uh, go through all the documentation in the website of weboots and with the help of that documentation we can uh, we, we can learn the general function of all the libraries in the weboots and uh, we can program them accordingly and lastly and sorry that's the second last step in the third step we we keep the model uh, of both robot and environment and after keeping the robot in the environment we start the simulation and we look that if our uh, our uh, robot works properly in that environment or not so for example if i make a obstacle avoiding robot i i keep uh, i keep robot in a world world and i keep various obstacles in front of it so i test whether it will avoid all the obstacles or not so if it doesn't do that i obviously fail uh, or if it uh, success if, if it uh, avoids all the obstacles i success so uh, basically we test all the things that we need according to the plan we previously made so we we test all the things and if we succeed then lastly we transfer that to a real life robot and we choose different hardware and begin prototyping and this is the basic workflow of using webots project 
<laughs> so there is an example i have kept uh, so if you might be interested you guys might be interested so this is a example of simple collision avoiding robot and you can see here it is it is written in c so basically <coughs> basically there are libraries that are pre written by webot itself and we include these libraries and we just go through the documentation and there are very various functions and we just uh, put that functions to make our program so so there is a time step uh, uh, there is a variable time step here time step um, basically is defined uh, the time duration certain time time duration and this is in seconds so basically yeah we have to enable the sensors and all this is the setup part and i would like to i would also say that this program is very much similar to like that of uh, arduino programming so firstly we need to set up all the things and we this ds refers to the uh, distance sensor so firstly it is asking to asking to get the device tag of each distance sensor that uh, that is kept uh, whatever the number be and secondly it is asking to enable the distance sensor and the distance sensor is also uh, uh, also sending the data in pulses so here yeah, the time step variable is kept where uh, i think it's 60 per second uh, pulse of uh, the ultrasonic sensor uh, or something like that should go should be transmitted and here yeah, so this is a control loop a control loop which is very very much similar to the uh, while loop of the arduino if you have used it so while through this means uh, this is the indefinitely running function so in this function <coughs> sorry so in this function um, it, it first asks the value of the distance sensor so basically we don't need to convert everything and all like that in arduino so directly it checks the value and if this is uh, greater than 512 then it turns around so for turning around the uh, speed is set <coughs> speed is set uh, according to the wheels and this is a very basic program and so if uh, nothing else if the value is not great uh, sorry the value is not greater uh, it will go straight and like that it will check and run check and run basic feedback loop so in this way a simple collision avoiding robot is made also also uh, the i think all of you have heard the name of boston dynamics boston dynamics is one of the very famous uh, robotics uh, company which is um, greatly researching on robots and making amazing robots uh, and i i know all of you have seen the robots working so two of the robots of boston dynamics known as atlas robot and sport robot so we can find the model of these two robots in this webots as well uh, so they have been modeled their program has already been written and all the documentation of this robot of boston dynamics has been kept in the website of webots itself and so this is very interesting part and they have kept it all open source Uh, so we can always uh, contribute to this program so lastly i would like to conclude by saying that ros is the nexus that is needed to bridge the hardware and software expertise in robotics you know people always think that robotics is only about hardware and stuff but no there are many strong software base is needed for it uh, implementing a single alg algorithm uh, so i think there is time limit so sorry for that okay so i like i would finish it in time so 
there is always uh, there has been gap but you know implementing a single al- algorithm in uh, in a robot is not qu- quite efficient there are many things that needs uh, need to be done like you know for making a car you need to you might need to fetch a uh, like a map to know all the stuff so there might be api needed to communicate between different things so for all those stuff that will be provided by software the concept of rs and webots this kind of stuffs were developed and also webots will help to reduce the cost for modeling uh, and making the prototype because first all the testing will be done in simulation in webots so we we will succeed succeed in making all the stuff at the end and also use of rs and uh, webots will certainly help us in making robots easier efficient and cheaper also in the industrial level so saying this i would like to end my presentation here and i would like to give my give the other time remaining to amit kimachina for proceeding uh, sorry for for taking this program forward thank you